I've been a car sharing host for over five years now and I've been creating videos here on YouTube for over three, which is quite honestly crazy to think about. And today I have this YouTube channel, I have a vlog channel that I share with my husband HP, I have a TikTok and an Instagram where I post nearly every day, and over the course of the last few years, I have gotten a lot, and I mean a lot of hate comments. I also get a lot of the same comments and questions over and over and over again, sometimes multiple times per day. And so in today's video, I'm going to be addressing some of the common comments and misconceptions that I get asked or accused of whenever it comes to Turo car sharing and making money through the side hustle. And while I do want to preface that some of these questions absolutely come from haters that are not my biggest fan, some of the other questions are genuinely out of curiosity and they're from people that really would like to know the answer. So let's get started. Now, the first thing I do want to mention is that if you're somebody who's watched my videos in the past, and you probably know that I'm a car sharing host and I'm a pretty big advocate of car sharing as a whole, at least when it comes to lucrative side hustles. But regardless of how pro Turo and pro car sharing I am, I understand that Turo and car sharing isn't perfect and it certainly isn't for everyone. Turo has been an excellent side hustle for me that has turned into a full fledged six figure business. And I also believe that if you approach Turo the right way, meaning you buy cars at the right price, you keep in mind how much you can actually rent that car for, and you follow the terms of service, you can also be successful at Turo. But I also understand that Turo isn't for everyone, and I'm certainly not trying to shill Turo out as a one-size-fits-all side hustle solution for everyone, because that is certainly not the case. My goal for this channel is to educate people on car sharing. If you're somebody who's interested in the business model, you can come here to learn the pros, cons, and how to get started. And if you're interested in learning more by checking out my course, The Car Sharing Masterclass, you can use the code OFFER100 to get $100 off. Link is down in the description below. Now, with that out of the way, let's dig in. The first one is in regards to insurance and financing, and this is one I get all the time. But this one specifically states, fun fact, most insurance companies and banks don't want to insure you, or if they know you're renting out your car, they won't let you. Now, this commenter is technically right, but something about the negative tone of this comment is something I'm not a big fan of because it's missing out a lot of context here as well. This is technically true. There are a lot of insurance companies and a lot of banks that want absolutely nothing to do with Turo and car sharing, meaning that if you're somebody who's renting out your car on Turo, you can't get insured through them, or if you're somebody who's buying a car to rent that car out on Turo, you're not gonna be able to get financing through them. This is absolutely true and is the case with a lot of companies. But the thing is, a lot doesn't mean all. And there are certainly companies out there that are in fact pro Turo and pro car share. Liberty Mutual, AAA, and USAA are all companies that offer insurance in some regards to car sharing hosts. There are also commercial options out there as well, like GMI, ABI Period X, as well as Lula. I do have an affiliate link with Lula down in the description below. And as far as financing, this is again technically true. Some financial arms are absolutely not Turo friendly and they do not want their financed vehicle to be rented out to other people. The most notable anti-Turo companies out there currently are Mercedes Financial and Ally Financial. So if you're somebody that purchased a car with these two financial arms, you could absolutely be at risk of being in breach of your financial contract. And there have even been instances where these two financing companies have actually gone out and repossessed cars that they financed because these cars were listed out on Turo. So this is true and there are companies that are very, very anti-Turo, which is why if you're somebody who's wanting to finance a car with Turo, I would definitely advise against going with Ally or Mercedes and I would also advise you to read your financial agreement with a fine tooth comb in order to ensure that you're following the terms. Because the reality is while there are some companies that don't want to finance Turo vehicles, there are other companies that are fine with it. And as long as you make your monthly payments, they don't really care what you do with the car. On to the next one is a question that I get asked hands down most often. And whenever I say that I get asked this question all the time, I mean I get asked it probably five to 10 times per day. And this is the question of how do you rent older cars on Turo? And I've probably answered this question dozens of times on this channel and hundreds of times on social media. And the reality is Turo does have vehicle requirements that you have to adhere to, but these requirements are when you have to list a vehicle, not how long a vehicle is eligible on Turo. Turo vehicle requirements dictate that you cannot list a car with more than 130,000 miles that is older than 12 years old. But as long as you list a car within those parameters and it goes out on its first trip before it surpasses those parameters, you can actually keep a car on Turo as long as you'd like to, assuming that the car is in good condition. This is how I'm able to have cars that are 2007, 2008, 2009, 2010, and how I'm able to have cars that are well above 130,000 miles. This is also very clearly outlined in the Turo Terms of Service, which is why I also encourage anyone who's interested in joining Turo to read those terms. It adds a ton of clarity. 
The next comment was in response to a video we made about how we manage our cars. And this comment said, and to think people don't give a shit about a regular rental might be hard going after douchers that tear your car up. This is one of the huge value adds and one of the great things about Turo and car sharing through these large platforms is that as a host, assuming that you follow the terms of service, you are guaranteed payment for really anything that goes wrong. Again, following the terms of service is an important caveat here. So for example, if a guest smokes in my car, if they keep the car for an extra few days without extending, if they go over in miles, if they don't fill up the car with gas, I am going to get payment for those things as long as I did what I'm required to do as a Turo host. It doesn't matter if that guest never pays Turo, I am going to get paid. I feel like whenever it comes to car sharing, there's this misunderstanding that whenever something goes wrong, I have to hound my guest for repayment. So for example, if somebody smokes in my car, I have to hound my guest for that $250 smoke fee. But in reality, that's where Turo comes in and it's their job to hound the guests for payment. That's whenever they'll send notifications to the guests for payment, they'll report it to the credit bureaus, they'll do what they need to do in order to get paid. But in the meantime, I'm getting paid regardless. It really is as simple as logging into the Turo app, requesting reimbursement, submitting my evidence, and then just waiting a few days until I get paid. There is absolutely no hounding whatsoever. In fact, in the last five years and in the last 3,300 trips, I've never had to hound a guest for payment for anything because I simply rely on Turo to do it for me. And so while I can definitely understand where this misconception comes from, it isn't accurate. And whether I need to collect damage claims, gas fees, mileage claims, cleaning fees, whatever it is, I am going to collect payment as long as I did what I need to do as a Turo host. The rest is Turo's job. Another question is from the same video. And this was a commenter that asked, why stay on Turo. Start your own company and stop paying Turo so much to use the platform. Now, this is a genuine question, and this is actually a question that I get asked all the time. And the way that I see it is that Turo provides an important value, and that value is in the form of insurance and marketing. Sure, I pay Turo 20%, and once you take into account the fees and miscellaneous other charges, Turo probably makes much more than only 20% off of my rentals. But you have to take into account how much Turo is paying you versus how much you're paying them. Every year, I go through my financials and I do a rough estimation. And I say rough because it's nearly impossible possible to do an exact accurate breakdown. Basically what I want to try to figure out is how much did I pay Turo throughout the year versus how much did they pay me? And whenever I say how much they paid me, I'm taking into account mostly damage claims and total losses. I do this financial breakdown to confirm that Turo is providing me a value for the money that I'm paying them. And the reality is they are. In my mind, my cars are protected. My cars are consistently booked out. So why would I wanna to move to another platform or go independent whenever Turo is providing me a value? It really is no different than if I was to go buy more robust insurance for my fleet, or if I was to go hire a marketer to advertise my fleet. I don't need to do that because Turo does it for me. And while I certainly wouldn't say that going independent is completely off the table forever, I will say it's not gonna be happening anytime soon. With anybody's situation, the math doesn't lie. So if you're somebody who's interested in going independent and severing ties with Turo altogether, I encourage you to sit down and do the math. Figure out how much you're paying Turo versus how much they're paying you. And if the numbers make sense to stay on Turo, well, then your question has been answered for you. But if the numbers make sense for you to leave Turo, then maybe you should start researching that path. I always say the numbers don't lie and this certainly does apply to Turo and car sharing as well. Another comment that I see quite often is comments and questions regarding skepticism about our trip count and the amount of money that we earn on Turo. We make a lot of money with our Turo fleet. We have 3,300 trips on Turo and there seems to be a very common misunderstanding about how trip count and overall earnings correlate with one another in a Turo fleet. In a recent TikTok that HP and I made, we talked about how we got started with Turo and how currently today we have over 3,300 trips. And we got a number of comments telling us that our math wasn't added up. And this is a comment that I see quite regularly amongst my numerous social media channels. For example, not hating, just asking 3,300 trips at $60 average rental is $200,000 for five years. That's 40,000 a year gross income. Seems low to me. Can you give some more info? Or this guy, math isn't mathing. Five years, 365 days in a year is 1,825. How do you have 3,300 trips? The second guy also said that I deserved a black eye, so obviously he isn't the brightest bulb on the bush. But the first commenter was genuinely asking out of curiosity, and I get these types of genuine questions all the time. And I think that these questions simply come out of confusion of how Turo trips and Turo earnings actually work. 
So this person thinks that because you only have 365 days in a year and I've been on Turo for five years, that means that I could only have a maximum of 1,825 trips. This is completely disregarding the fact that I have 25 cars. Granted, I didn't start at 25 cars, but I've had more than one car for a very long time. But even then, it doesn't really take into account the true math of how Turo trips work, because this would assume that one Turo trip equals a one day rental, which also isn't the case. A Turo trip is not a day or a week or even a month. A Turo trip is one booking. For example, just today, we had a booking on one of our cars for three hours. It was just a three hour long trip. We made $30 off of this trip and that counts as one Turo trip. Whereas last week we had a car that got returned from a 42 day rental. This 42 day rental made us $2,200 and it also accounted for one trip. You can't correlate an amount of time or an amount of earnings to one single trip because it really varies depending on the reservation. This also means it is nearly impossible to accurately gauge how much a Turo host is making based off of their trip count alone. You couldn't even really accurately guess it based off of the amount of cars they have and their trip count because there are simply too many variables that come into play. In my eyes, a trip count is a great way to gauge a host experience, but it isn't a great way to guess how much they're actually making. But with that being said, you guys, I wanted to make this video because I get so many of the exact same questions every single day and every single week on my channel. And while I did make a video similar to this one years ago, I haven't made one in a very long time. So I wanted to update you guys on some of the most common questions I've been getting lately. If you have any questions, comments, if you have anything to add, I would love to hear it. So make sure to leave a comment down below. And while you guys are at it, make sure to hit the like button, hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell. And I'll see you guys in the next video.